Hello, welcome back to another episode of Mike's DVDs and Blu-rays collection. I'm your host, Mike. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And uh, today, I'm going to spotlight one of my favorite directors of all time, Francois Truffaut. Uh, he's a French director, and he's part of the new wave of... Uh, he was part of the new wave of French... Uh, the French Revolution, the new wave of cinema in the uh, early 60s. Him, Jean-Luc Godard, and Melville, Jean-Pierre Melville, were all, were all part of the... Uh, part of the uh, new wave and um, unfortunately Truffaut would have he passed away in 1984 he was he was young he had cancer so he had a short career from 1958-59 to 1984 um, and he was a um, very influential director um, and he's one of my favorite directors um, I want to say um, I want to start off with his movies. First, I'm going to show you my DVDs. I'm going to have I'm going to show you some DVDs, Blu-rays, and laser discs. And uh, I got some older Criterion laser discs in here. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think I'm missing a couple of his movies. I believe I have most of them. Um, but um, there you go. So uh, let's get right to it. Um, might make this uh, two episodes because it's is a lot of films. So let's do the DVDs and Blu-rays first. Uh, 1959, his uh, debut film, uh, The 400 Blows, a uh, monumental, um, influential debut, if I ever know one. I mean, it's such a great movie, the story of a young boy and his problems and growing up and stuff. Uh, Truffaut would focus on kids a lot uh, throughout his, his career, uh, seeing things from children's point of view and uh, young people's point of view and stuff. Um, but the 400 Blows would uh, really put him on the map. Um, it was very successful, uh, won a lot of awards, and um, it was a big hit for him. And uh, still a very uh, influential movie to this day, The 400 Blows. Next up, um, I, I can't I always get this confused if it's his second film or his third film. I think it's his third film, but this is uh, 1962, yeah, 1962's Jules and Jim. So I think this is his third film, maybe fourth. I don't know. I'm kind of long there. But Jules and Jim, um, 1962, it stars um, uh, Jean Moreau, um, Oscar Werner, and Henry Siri. Uh, this is a early uh, DVD release from Criterion, and um, it's loaded with extras on here. It's it's a pretty loaded two disc edition. Two, has a lot of sp special features on here, uh, but yeah, this is a great um, story of a uh, kind of a uh, love triangle of, of sorts amongst friends. They grew up. Uh, these two two boys and a girl, and it shows them growing up and falling in love with each other, both falling for Jean Moreau. Uh, so it's a great story of uh, love and friendship and everything. It's a great movie, Jules and Jim. Next up, this is a kind of a lengthy big box that Criterion put out uh, in 2003, I want to say. This is The Adventures of Aunt, Aunt, Antone... Uh, Anton Donel, Donel, oh gosh, I'm, I'm sorry, my French is horrible, uh, but this basically shows the story of the young boy in 400 Blows, and it shows him growing up. Uh, this spans um, 20 years uh, in film years here, 59 to 79, uh, in four, four movies and a short that kind of document the story of this character, Anton Donel. Uh, so he starts out as a boy uh, in the 400 Blows. And um, this is pretty interesting for an early Criterion release because they were released in these like cardboard thin cases and stuff. So it has it starts out with the 400 Blows. This is another DVD um, edition. It has basically the same stuff from the other release. And 
uh, they partnered with Wellspring, actually. I think they owned the, some of these Truffaut films at the time. So it starts with uh, the 400 Blows. Uh, I think it picks back up with Stolen Kisses. So it basically shows him as a child, dating, his dating, being married, and divorced, basically, is the major points in each movie. Uh, bed and board would show uh, him married at this point, him and his wife running a bed and board, I believe. Or, I, I don't know, I haven't seen it in a long time, I'm sorry. Uh, this would be 1970. And then this one, finally, in 1979, Love on the Run. This was a big hit for uh, Truffaut at the time. So this shows kind of the finishing uh, part of their story. Uh, it also includes this extra bonus disc that has all the supplements on it, and it has the 18-minute uh, um, short film, The Mischief Makers, from 1957, which was a short film that Truffaut did as his actual first film, you know, and it's all loaded in this. Um, it also comes with this big booklet. I mean, that's a pretty lengthy, big, thick booklet for a release. I'm really impressed with this because this is a early release, you know, from Craig Herring. And um, I remember having a hard time finding this for some reason, finding a decent copy. But it's really cool because it, it looks like a suitcase. The whole thing looks like a suitcase, you know, and it shows all of it. But, yeah, this is just packed full of Truffaut and the characters. And it really goes into interviews. There's supplements with the writer, his co-writers, and people that helped with it so interviews great a great release um, of course it's out of print now it'd be cool if Criterion put that out you know maybe an, an updated version on Blu-ray next up this is uh, from MGM's World Films banner they uh, released these in the early 2000s 2001 uh, a series of foreign films this would be a uh, uh, the story of Adele H., which was was a seventy five, yeah, nineteen seventy five. The story of Adele H., which is more of a costume picture, uh, shows the uh, you know the love, uh, the longing, and the the thoughts of this young girl Adele uh, back in those days. Uh, not to go into detail and everything. Um, I've only saw this movie once. Um, I, I've you know, it, it didn't knock me over or anything, but I, I thought it was a well-made drama. I need to re-watch it, actually. It's been many, many years since I've seen it. Now, this next one is one of my personal favorites. It's definitely in my top five, Truffaut. Uh, 1980s, The Last Metro. Now, this is released through Wellspring, uh, DVD release. Um, this film stars Catherine Deneuve, Gerard Depardieu and John Corrette. Uh, it tells the story of a couple uh, who runs this theater in France uh, during the uh, the uh, outset of World War II, uh, with the uh, French occupation of the not with the Nazis taking over, and uh, the husband is a uh, or the boyfriend, the husband, I, I can't was it husband, I believe. Uh, is Jewish, so they basically hide him out in the basement for a couple years, and he carry, you know, tries to carry on life and everything. And um, Gerard Depardieu is a actor who ends up. I, gosh, I'm trying to think if he ends up helping them and stuff. But it's a really, really good movie, The Last Metro. The next up is The Man Who Loved Women from 1977. This was a big hit. This is a comedy. Um, it was a uh, big hit so much that Hollywood took notice of it and made a remake of it in 1981 with Burt Reynolds. So, uh, The Man Who Loved Women. Next up, I have the 1966 release of Fahrenheit 451, the uh, Ray Bradbury story comes to life in vivid color um, in this 50th anniversary edition on Blu-ray. Um, I love this movie, just the colors, they just pop off the screen. 
Um, this would make a great 4K version, 4K edition, I, I believe. Uh, it has uh, Julie Christie, Oscar Werner, and um, what's his name? Cyril C Cusack is in it. Um, and this was uh, one of Truffaut's only English movies he made. He made it all in English. Even though he didn't speak a word of English, he, he directed it through um, help and stuff. So it's really interesting that it got made, how, how it got made. But yeah, very good movie, Fahrenheit 451. Next up, I have the 2003 uh, Warner Brother uh, release of Day for Night, the uh, 1973 movie Truffaut made. It's basically a movie about movies. Um, it's kind of told from the director's point of view and his problems with writers and the actors and the actors not getting along and sleeping with each other and everything under the sun happens in this. Um, it stars the lovely um, uh, Jacqueline Bissett. Uh, really good movie. Uh, this DVD edition is loaded with um, special features. It has four uh, documentaries on here. Just looking at this. I actually got the this and a few other ones from this store, Wild and Wooly Video, a Louisville store, video store that went out of business about five, six years ago, and um, they were selling off all their videos, and I, I traveled up there in a couple weekends in a row and loaded up on some of their movies, so... Um, that's why it says Ryan likes this one. Um, so they would have picks like that. A great video store that you know, sadly sold off by the owner. Uh, but yeah, Day for Night. Now this is the uh, 2015 version uh, from Criterion Collection. This is the, uh, the Blu-ray edition from Criterion. Day for Night, 73. It's loaded with uh, special features. Um, I think some of the features carry over from the 2003 edition, uh, but I'm not sure if all of them do, so it's, it's I'm holding on to both editions for sure. So there you go. Day for Night, 1973. Next up we have 1969's Mississippi Mermaid. Now this uh, stars Catherine Deneuve and Jean-Paul Bellamondo. Now he just recently died at age 80. Uh, and he, he got to work with some of the best directors in the world. Uh, before he passed away, um, he uh, he was made famous by making artsy movies, uh, but he his true passion was just making regular run of the mill movies. Uh, he felt more comfortable making those types of movies. Um, he was also one of his great passions was uh, boxing and stuff. So he was uh, he's kind of a, of he was kind of an everyday everyday man in an artsy movie kind of stuff. But, but I'm really glad he got to work with some of these great directors because it brought out his talent for sure. Next up is one of my personal favorites. Uh, the first Fran Francois Truffaut movie I ever saw. Uh, this would be 1968's The Bride Wore Black. Uh, this is uh, his nod to Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, even using Bernard Herrmann's musical score all the way through it. Who worked with Alfred Hitchcock a lot? Uh, stars uh, Jean Moreau, and uh, tells the story about the on the day of her wedding, uh, there was these men across the street drinking, playing poker all day, and they were drunk, and they were started messing around with a rifle and like aiming it, looking through the scope at people, and uh, it went off and it shot the groom, it shot her husband, so it made her a widow on her wedding day. So uh, she vows to, to kill each one of them. So she takes her, her money, her earning, all her life savings to travel all across France to, to kill each one of these men. And it's a big influence on like Tarantino and stuff from Kill Bill, uh, similar s stuff. I'm, I'm sure it's an influence on him. But uh, The Bride Wore Black, one of my favorites from Truffaut. And... Um, that, that's all my Blu-rays and DVDs. Let me um, stop it right there, and we'll pick up with the Laserdiscs in another episode. Um, 
If you like this episode so far, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe to my channel and check out all my videos I have. I have all kinds of videos on film noir, director spotlights, black exploitation, spaghetti westerns, all kinds of stuff. So um, check my channel out. And uh, until next time, guys, I am Mike. Be safe out there and always watch great movies.